So I've said this before, but you should definitely realize this by now that every time I write EX, for example, that could be something just like quiz, midterm problem, homework problem. So every time you write EX example, if you're one of the people with colored pencil, pens, highlighters, it's a good time to probably use one or draw some big circle around it or something like that. So we will craft. Uh, I should say graph one period of, so we were graphing one period before, but I'm going to explicitly say graph one period of. So there are th three transformations happening. Oh, let's rewind for a second. I forgot something on this last problem. It's a good thing we have space to finish this off. What did I not? I took care of the, all the horizontal stuff. What did I not deal with? The three. So that'll be, so it's multiplication. All multiplications are stretches. You have to be a little careful when they're horizontal, but all multiplications are stretches. So I need to stretch it three vertically. So there's a few ways to do it. I could redraw the graph, basically just taller like that. That would be one way to do it. There's another way you can do it. You don't have to draw everything to scale. So I can just say, hey, look, those are 3 and negative 3. Right there. So we stretch it by just saying that the scale changed. And if you want to get really precise, you can go, oh, there's 1, there's 2, there's 3. Negative one, negative two, negative three. So I will absolutely accept that as your uh, graph right there. In fact, I won't know that you necessarily thought of that at the very end. All I read is what you write. I don't read your mind. Or at least you think I don't read your mind. I certainly don't grade it. Uh, so you can totally do this. <clears throat> now this is very not to scale. Why is that? Well, our entire period is pi. So that whole measurement of pi, that's a little bit more than 3, but just a little more than 3. And that's 3 right there. So it's very not to scale right now. So I don't require your graph to be to scale. If it was really to scale, it would be way taller or way narrower if I was scaling it correctly. All right, so that was our, uh, better write that down, that was our stretch vertically by 3. We just took those points and relabeled them. Why did I not care about my x-intercepts right here? Their y-coordinates are 0. What happens if you multiply 0 by 3? Still 0. So they're not going to move. So you can think of stretches like you're stretching away from the x-axis both directions. So you're making pizza or whatever dough you're making, and you're, for whatever reason, you have to stretch it out from the middle. That's how a graph works. So you're stretching out from the middle. We're going to graph this cosine function. So step one, we have to do that algebra of factoring out the coefficient of x right there. So we're going to factor the coefficient of x out. First step is very easy. The tricky part is figuring out what is left. So you should be able to tell the pi is not going to be there anymore. The pi is getting factored out. What number, also the negative factored out, so it's going to be a plus. What number needs to go there? Let's try guess and check. So let's take a guess of a half. So all I did was basically take out the negative pi. And now we're going to guess and check. What do I get when I multiply back in? So if I distribute. I'll have negative pi over 6. That's not what I should have, though. I should have negative pi over 3. So what do I do to change this so it's actually correct? So I leave it like this. What I need is 3 times more. That'll be pi over 6. No. Yeah, it'll be pi over 6. What I want is pi over 2. So I need 3 times more. 
Or you can think I'm factoring out a third, so I need to, uh, so I'd be multiplying by a third, so I need to unmultiply by a third. So let's multiply by three. So that's another way to think about it. So we're going to take that one, turn it into a three. And now you can check, and if you multiply it in, I see the three cancels the third right there, and then I'll have negative pi over two. If that doesn't work for you, you can always just unmultiply by that negative pi over three, which means multiply by negative three over pi. So it looks like we'll have right here a horizontal reflection with that negative two. If you remember, reflections are a little bit annoying to work with, especially if you're going to have a shift and a reflection happening at the same time. What algebra can I do to deal with that negative sign? What algebraic property do I use? So cosine's even. Now you have to be very careful when you use even property. So let me write down the even property. I know we've written it before. Cos negative x equals cos regular x. So the property we're using is basically cos negative x times something. I'll just call it uh, a. So x and a, it's just two things multiplied together. They're grouped together. So I'm going to bring the negative outside because it's a product right there. So this will be regular cos x times whatever it was multiplied by. Now I'm saying this because what you don't want to do, and I'll do this in the red pen, so what we had sort of looked like that uh, with this negative sign. This is not cos x minus a. If you want to do this and be clever about it, you have to take out, you basically need to factor out your negative sign so it's multiplied. So the whole thing is negative. So if you really want to do this correctly, you could write this as cos x plus a, but I recommend that you do the intermediate step. So that's a bit dangerous. Let me write that at the bottom. So that is cos x plus a. the step that you should do in between until you've done enough of these that you feel uh, comfortable just doing them uh, in this manner will be cos negative x plus a like that. And you can bring that negative outside because the whole entire inside term is negative. So if it's added in the inside, you need to uh, make it so it's negative just one whole term like that. So this one is not correct there. So we're using even properties so we don't have to worry about reflections. So this is negative 2 cos pi over 3 x plus 3 halves. So we have all the information we need. We're just going to worry about horizontal first. We're going to graph that out, and then we're going to do the vertical stretch at the very end. So ready to write period. So period is 2 pi over a. In this case, what is a? Too much thinking, too many brain cells. What is A? So we're going to go with the last one, so we're going to use pi over 3 right there. So our period is going to be 2 pi divided by this number, pi over 3. So we're going to have a multi-story fraction. So that's 2 pi divided by pi over 3. And whenever you have a multi-story fraction, you need to make sure you know numerator from denominator. So now I'm going to multiply by reciprocal, which is 3 over pi. And our pi's cancel, and we get 6. That's a little strange. This period has no pi's in it. That's OK. 
the period will not have pies in it if you started with a coefficient that had a pi in the original problem. So we see the original one had cos uh, negative pi over 3x. That pi over there is the reason we're not going to get a pi in the period. It's going to cancel that pi out. We just saw it happen. And last up, we have a shift, three halves. Is that a shift uh, right or a shift left? Which way is plus three halves going? We're looking at this plus, that's the one we're looking at. So you're going to go left, three halves. So it looks positive, but you're actually going to go to the negative side. So we're going to start at th three halves, or really negative three halves, because we're going to the left. So that's negative three halves. Now our period is six. It would be really nice if we measured it in halves. So we want to go down everything in halves. So we're going to have 12 pi over, or ooh, 12 halves. No pi's in the period. All right, so we got 12 halves. So if I measure in halves, so I'm marking off every half right here. And I'm just going to count 12 of them going over. So there's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's wrong. I counted 12. But why is that number not 12 halves? So I started at negative 3 halves. So I really went 3 before I hit 0. And then I went another 9 after that. So that really should be 9 halves right there, not 12 halves. So that's a very common mistake. So that should be 9 halves. And now that we have all 12 marked out, we can pretty easily pick the middle. So you can either average the first and the last, or you can just sit here and count six over, however you want to do it. Now, our x-intercepts are halfway between the halfway point in the end and the other halfway point in the end. Or I should say halfway point in the other end. So we're going to go the halfway between the midpoint and the end, and then halfway between the other midpoint and the end, right there. And of course, that one, the left x-intercept on the y-axis there is obvious going to be uh, 0 for x-coordinate. What about the x-coordinate of the intercept that is on the right? What is the x-coordinate of that right x-intercept? You can be brave and guess it. It's not hard. Six halves. So if you really want to write uh, three, you can. But I would just write halves. Keep everything in halves. And if you want, for completeness, you can write zero halves right here. So you just know, ah, negative three, zero, three, six, nine. So you can see it all lined up nicely like that. And now all you need to do is remember what your graph looked like. What you had to memorize somewhere up here. There we go. So that's what we're going to retrace. So it starts at one, ends at one. You got negative one in between. Now, we can accurately measure 1 here. It looks like 1 should be there, and that's negative 1, because we're not counting in pi's now. So we can be pretty accurate with 1 and negative 1. And then draw your curve. Oh, it's a pretty nice cosine curve. So 
So is this graph finished? So I accounted for everything in the original? Nope. So not only do I have to stretch, as a vertical stretch, but not only is it stretched by two, it's a negative two. So it's a stretch and a reflection or a flipping over. So I can't really just, I will not accept if you just say, oh, look, this is negative two and positive two. That's not going to work. So you can't flip your y-axis upside down. You can stretch it a little bit, but you can't flip it around. So I'm going to need to go and redraw this, and I'm going to draw it upside down now. So I'm going to use 2 and negative 2. So I'll redraw it below here so I can line up all my x coordinates nicely. So x coordinates aren't going to change. I don't need to label every single or put a little mark everywhere. I know my x-intercepts are not moving, so that I can actually label those right on there. So now I need to use 2. I'll go way up there to 2 and minus 2. And what was at y-coordinate 1 is going to be at negative 2 now. So we're turning the graph over, stretching. So we're starting down at the bottom. In the middle, we're up at 2, and then back down to negative 2. And then connect them together with a smooth curve. If you normally write in pen like I do, this can be a good time to use pencil if you're doing a graph. Uh, it's not very nice to cross out part of your graph. It makes it look really bad. You can do that a little bit with algebra and just continue on your next line and say forget about that line, but it doesn't really work with the graph so well. So I really recommend you use a pencil for your graph or an erasable pen. That works too. So there's our final graph right there. And we'll put a box around it. Now I'm going to ask you to label x-intercepts and the x-values at the beginning and in the middle. So here's the five x values I want, and then the y value should be very obvious. There's really only three y values you're going to use. So we looked at graphing in on Fuplot. That's a really good tool to use. Check your graphs. If you uh, graph out of the book, the book will have, it'll the book problem will say graph one period of, and then the answer will look like a much better drawn version of this, because I'll generate it with a computer, so things will be very accurate. And you can see how does my graph compare with the graph in the book. So what I can't do is ask you uh, on web work to draw a graph, because I can't have any way of grading it. So because of that, here's another time where I'm going to tell you to do problems out of the book. And we're in 10.5, I believe. I think we're in 10. 10.5, yes. So your quiz will be Friday. So make sure you graph cosine and sine. We'll be graphing sine next. So you determine how many book problems you want to do. You might need to do two or three, and you get it. You might need to do uh, five or 10. You may need to do more rather than less. So just up to you. You'll know how you feel as you're doing them. If I ask you for x-intercepts, we'll just list them right off this graph. So I asked for, uh, we'll write some properties here, domain. 
range x intercepts y intercepts Yeah, I could. I won't ask you for minimums and maximums, but we'll on a. I'll write them down here. All right, domain. Did we draw the entire domain for this function? We just graph one period. So this function goes forever. So if you want to draw the whole thing, you can't. But what you can do is just say, ah, it's going to go forever, and here's enough of the pattern that you can redraw it. So you sort of draw the minimum amount so somebody could redraw it. This is like going dot, 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 like continue the pattern. All right, domain, everything. So that'll be negative infinity, positive infinity. Our range, what is the range of our final graph here? Negative 2 to 2. So usually negative 1 to 1, but this one got stretched. So our domain sort of doubled. So this domain is negative 2, or range is negative 2, positive 2. And x-intercepts, I see 0, 3, where, and this 6 halves is 3. Where would my next x-intercept be? So you're going to think periodic. So if I move one period from 0, I'll be at 6. So 0, 3, 6. What if I move one period from 3? I move over 6, I'll be at 9. So this pattern should be very obvious. Multiples of 3. They're not always so nice. These are nice whole numbers. A lot of times it's like a, maybe a half and then five halves and whatever halves come after that. So you have to think in terms of you know, halves or quarters. Sometimes there's pies thrown in. So this. Uh, I won't ask this on this quiz, but uh, in the future, we're, what we're really going to do with x-intercepts is solving algebraic equations. So what I'm showing you is there's an infinite number of x-intercepts. So I'm going to write comma dot dot dot. And on the other side, I could, if I moved one period from 3 to the left, I'd go 6 to the left and be at negative 3. So I can keep going to the left also. So I got negative 3 negative 6, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I'll just list them like this. So they're all the positive negative multiples of 3. How many y-intercepts? Better just be 1 or you don't have a function. Well, you could have no y-intercepts also, depending on which function you have. So our y-intercept is ordered as a point zero, zero. Uh, Minimums, I can see two minimums right here. So let's write the uh, 9 halves. And we want to include the y value also. So we'll write them as points. 9 halves, negative 2. There's also negative 3 halves, negative 2, which I'm totally going to run out of space. Let me write that one first. And these are all separated by one period, by six. So I could write the next one even without uh, looking at the graph, just looking at the pattern. If I add six or 12 twelfths, I will have 21 halves. And after this, we can say the pattern's going to keep going. And then I'll just say the pattern goes the other direction also. We're going to formalize this with using the uh, period of 6 when we get into algebra a little more. All right, maximums. Well, all I see is 3 halves right here at the top. So 3 halves, 2. I'm going to space this out intentionally. Where would the next positive maximum be after 3 halves, 2? So if I go one period to the right, almost 15. So it'll be a the 12 halves plus this guy right here. So you have to start with your offset and then go 12 halves. So we're going to have 15 halves 2. And we can also go left. So what is the next maximum if I go left? 6. Well, 
If I go left, 12 halves. Negative 9. So you got 3 minus 12 is 9, or negative 9. So negative 9 halves, comma, 2. And then again, we're going to go dot, dot, dot. So I'm not going to do this for every graph. It takes a little bit of time. But we're just going to notice that it's happening. So just like cosine, uh, when we graphed that for the very first time, we didn't know how it looked. So we're going to plot some points and then uh, figure out what it looks like and then sketch the rest of it. So we'll start at 0 <coughs> and pi over 6, pi over 4 pi over 3, pi over 2, and you better know the sine values. So write out the sine values. I'll give you a hint. It's a cosine one that's flipped over. So if you go back two or three pages, you'll see all your cosine values. And you're just going to flip them around. So we're starting at 0, ending at 1. And for an accurate graph, we're going to write the decimal approximations for these, which I think were 0.71. That was it, 0.71 and 0.8 something, 0.87. Is that right? All right, that was correct. So we're ready to graph this out now. So we'll go and call that pi. So that'll be pi, which is close to 3. So we'll say 1, negative 1. <coughs> I'm going to try to keep this original graph to scale here as best we can. So I really only want to go to pi over 2 for now. Pi over 2, halfway is pi over 4. And then I'm going to cut the from 0 to pi over 2, I'm going to cut that into three pieces. So that'll be pi over 6, pi over 3. It's not the best sine curve, but we'll look at one that uh, food plot makes afterwards so we can get a, a more accurate picture of it. So sine from pi over 2 to pi. Let's look at the sine function on the unit circle. So we just take, took care of quadrant 1 right there. So the y coordinate goes from 0 to 1. What happens in quadrant 2? Our y coordinate starts at 1 and ends at 0. So it's going to trace a similar pattern, just starting at the top, ending at 0. So the curve will look like that right there. And in quadrant 3, its sign does start at 0, but the y value becomes negative and goes down to negative 1. So we'll measure to oh, over to 2 pi and in between is 3 pi over 2. 
So at 3 pi over 2, our y value is negative 1. And 2 pi, our y value is back to 0. So there is one period of sign. And of course, our period we measure from beginning to end of the pattern. So here the period is 2 pi because we didn't have any horizontal stretching going on. So this is a standard 2 pi period. What's that? It is. Yeah, it should be going through pi. So let's get a nice graph of sine. So I've shown you Wolfram. You can absolutely graph on Wolfram. But if you have, you realize that it doesn't let you really zoom in or look at the graph very carefully. So it gives you a, a very rough sketch. You can't change any of the options on it. So because of that, I'd recommend don't use it to look and see how accurate your graph is. Use either Fuplot, uh, if you're comfortable with the calculator, uh, Desmos is another one that a lot of people like. And we're going to have the same issues where we need to go and change the window and change the way it's measured. So we can see there's definitely more than one period on here. It has a couple of waves. So we'll go and change our window. We'll start at zero. And we'll go to two pi. Uh, y we'll do, we'll do negative two to positive two. And spacing grid spacing. I'll do pi over 2. I think that's how we spaced it out. So that should give us a really nice graph right there. That's what I was trying to draw right there. And then you see the markings are nice pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2. Uh, you won't see the 2 pi because it gets cut off right at the end, but that is 2 pi. You can of course zoom a little bit out and you can see everything marked up nicely. I'm going to keep zooming out. Oh, that's the wrong kind of zoom. If I keep zooming out, whoa, oh, that'll work. All right, you can see it just keeps going forever. So we go back to the notes. I'm going to denote that just arrow, whoa. arrow like that. So we know it. this is enough to repeat the pattern indefinitely. So we're going to draw one nice period now, as close as we can to what we just saw. So this is what we're going to memorize. So we're going 0 to 2 pi, 1, negative 1. Do your best to make it about a sixth of as far out to 2 pi. We got a regular pi in the middle. Pi over two, three pi over two are x intercepts. No, they're not. Uh oh. I'm thinking of cosine right now. Pi over two. And I'm going to write my three pi over two on top of the line. So sine starts at 0, ends at 0, 0 in the middle. So our sine function goes from 0 up, back down to 0, and then negative back up to 0. We're going to go up to 1, down to negative 1.
So there is sine x. And of course, our period was 2 pi. So almost every period is 2 pi except tangent and cotangent. Those do not have a 2 pi period. And we'll see those. We won't have time to see those today. We'll do another type of question today instead. Uh, but we'll get to tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. And those get a little crazy because you actually have vertical asymptotes because you're going to be at times dividing by zero. And if you remember from pre-calculus, when you divide by zero, that's a vertical asymptote. So we could do another regular graphing problem where I just give you some sign of you know 3x plus pi over 2 and have you do all that. But I don't think we're going to learn anything from doing that. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to give you a graph and then ask you what function has that graph. So this is what I call the inverse or the backwards question. So I'm going to give you a graph and say, write down the function that has this graph. And this type of question I can ask you on web work, and I do ask you on web work. So I can have web work, there's a graph on there, and you have to type in the function that would make that graph. So we'll go from minus 2, 2, 4, 6. So the properties we looked at first were the hor that has the worst x-axis I've drawn. All right, you can draw your x-axis. That looks almost like a sine or cosine function itself. All right, feel free to draw that straight across. All right, we're looking at horizontal properties first. So let's look at shift. Does it look like it shifted left or right? Left, how many? Two. So I'm going to draw a little left arrow with a 2 next to it. So that'll be left 2. And what about the period? What is the actual period of this function right here? It's not 6. It's 8. So you go 6, but then there's another 2 hanging out on the other side. So you go 8. So if I measure the full period, it's going to look like that. 8. Why is it 8? Big minus small, 6 minus negative 2, which is 8. So that's how we get the difference between the big and the small one right there. Also known as, the word technically is range, but that's a bad word to use when we're talking about graphs, because that means another thing with graphs. But the range of these x values are 8. It goes from 6 to negative 2, or from 2 to negative 6, however you want to think of it. So our period is 8. And if we think of the way, so does this look more like a sine or a cosine function? Obviously, we may have to do some, it definitely doesn't go negative 1 to 1, so there's definitely some stretching going on. Maybe there's some reflecting. Does this look like cosine or sine? So it's like a cosine function. So let's think in cosines. So we're going to go, so we're looking for a cosine here. Because it's cosine, it's going to be a stretch of negative 2. A vertical stretch of negative 2 that's going to stretch it out 2 and then flip it over. So it's going to be upside down. So I'm going to write the standard form using cosine. Which of those four letters, A, A, H, or K, are we not going to need? So we don't need a K. There's no shift up or down. 
The reason I'm not doing shifts up and down is because they're usually the easiest ones, and so I'm not gonna really worry about them. You can handle them. Hopefully, if you survive pre-calculus, you can do a vertical shift. They're pretty easy to do. So we got no K going on. Now, big A is negative two. That's pretty easy to see. Big A is negative two, vertical transformations are easy. Is, do we know A or H? Which of those two do we know? We know H, and we want to go left, so it's going to need to look like plus. So it's going to be X plus two. So that plus two means left two. It's weird because it looks positive, but that actually means go left two. So why is it wrong if I put eight right there? Is the period A? The period is two pi over A. So this is the most common mistake I see right here. People just go and drop in whatever the period is right there. So don't do that. What we need to do is relate. So we have the period P, oh, wrong pen. P equals two pi over A. We know P, we said was eight. So eight equals two pi over A, and then solve for A. It's easy to do. Multiply, divide. So it was like A is pi over four. So I'm pretty sure this one's right, but if you typed it into WebWork and it says, hey, you're wrong, WebWork doesn't really give you any hints. What you can do is take your answer and go to food plot, and type it in, and you realize, oh, oops, maybe that should be a minus two. I shifted the wrong way, for example. So food plot will give you some information on what you did wrong. So before you go, what if you consider the function like this? and ignore this part. That's a sine function. Still stretch two, how much is this shifted? None. What's the period? Period is still eight, so we're gonna get our A is still pi over four. So the same period, so we'll get the same A. So you could write it, sine pi over four x, or two sine pi over four x. So that's why I said write a function with this graph. There is more than one answer. So if you can do it with cosine, you could have done it with sine with slightly different transformations in it. But no matter what, the period better stay the same. So this will be enough for your quiz Friday. So it's gonna be sine or cosine. I'll probably ask you a graph question, and then the reverse graph question, where I give you a graph and then say, hey, what's the function?